Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do the real review for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now let me start off with my usual disclaimer. This video might be kind of long, so grab your popcorn and your thought juice and get comfortable. Now I'm gonna start off by answering two questions everybody been asking me all week. Number one, you got an iPhone 12 Pro Max, should you upgrade and get the 13 Pro Max? And the answer is yes. Now, usually I would say the answer is yes and no. Yes, because you want to be at the top of the food chain, but no, because you're basically buying the same phone twice with some minor upgrades. This year, the answer is 100% yes. I would upgrade for two reasons. Now, there's a bunch of other reasons, but two main reasons. Number one, the 120 hertz refresh rate on the display. Now, let's talk about that for a minute. A lot of y'all who don't use Android phones, who never used a phone with 120 hertz refresh rate, don't understand how smooth that makes your phone feel. Now, I've been using 120 hertz for a long time. Whenever I go from Android to iPhone during the day, say I picked up my Galaxy S21, and then I use the iPhone 12 Pro Max, whenever I switch from Android to iPhone, you always feel a difference. It feels like the iPhone is smooth, but it just feels a little bit slower. Now, whenever I have these big Android versus iPhone wars, I always tell my boys they got iPhones, your phones just don't feel as smooth as an Android phone. And half of them never use an Android phone with 120 hertz refresh rate, so they don't know what I'm talking about. Let me say this. The iPhone 13 Pro Max, the 120 hertz refresh rate is the one upgrade that you as an iPhone user didn't know you needed until you got it. Now, let me explain. When I first get a new phone, being somebody who reviews phones all of the times, when I get a new phone, the first thing I'm doing is looking for the things that I don't like. Now, I want every phone to be the best. I'm not going into it with a closed mind, but I'm going into it from a reviewer's kind of uh, standpoint. So I'm looking for the good and the bad. All right? I'm not an Apple fanboy. I'm not just jumping on Apple's nutsacks like, oh, this is the dopest phone. I'm looking for things that I don't like. So when I first pulled out the phone and I started using it, the best word to describe the experience is wet. All right, now shout out to my shorty. She hate when I say moist. Right? This phone feels moist. It just feels wet. When you start scrolling through the iPhone, you're gonna notice the difference in the way it's in the way it feels, the way it scrolls, the way everything just moves around. It feels like you got water underneath the display. And that's how Android phones with 120 hertz refresh rate been feeling for years. For a long time, that's why us as hardcore Android users, now look, no fanboy shit going on. I'm just going to keep it real with y'all. But people who've been using 120 hertz refresh rate, there's a reason that you'll never want to go back. Now when you use this iPhone 13 Pro Max, you're going to understand the glory. Right? The glory that Android users been telling y'all about for all this time, the 120 hertz refresh rate. This feels like a totally different experience on iOS. It's unbelievable. Now, even though you could do the same thing similar on your iPad, it's different because of the size of the device. On a small phone like this, the 120 hertz refresh rate is gonna blow your mind, all right? You're gonna love this. I would upgrade for that reason alone, but there's more, all right? Shout out to Billy Mays, but wait, there's more. <laughs> and speaking of more, ladies and gentlemen, late, but still great. White Shoes is back in the building. I love my white shoes. I Let me sharpen up my white knife, shoes. I love my white shoes. White shoes. I love my white Calm down. The next reason I would upgrade from the 13, uh, from the 12 to the 13, the camera. And not just a regular point and shoot camera, cinematic mode on the camera. Cinematic mode on the iPhone 13 Pro Max is the best video camera that I've ever used on any phone to this day. And I'm gonna go on record right now, as much as I love Android phones, the cinematic mode on the 13 Pro Max is a game changer. Now I don't like throwing that word around loosely, but it really is. Use cinematic mode on your videos, you're gonna feel like Martin Scorsese. Right, you're gonna feel like Spike Lee making a movie about you eating a ham sandwich. It's just gonna look extra cinematic. Now I'm gonna show you this video that my brother took. We was at a little jewelry store event. All he did was pull out his 13 Pro Max, 
point and shoot using cinematic mode. Now, we was both kind of learning it together. First, you did a, a video without cinematic mode, and it looked like a dope video. But I said, look, man, let's try cinematic mode. Let's try to learn it together, because just like I always say, any feature on your phone is a gimmick and let you take the time to learn how to use it. Now, this is my first iPhone 13 Pro Max, so I, was, <laughs> I wasn't born knowing how to use it. So I said, look, let's play around with cinematic mode. Boy, was that the best decision that I ever made, okay? Cinematic mode is gonna have all of your videos of your pets, your video of you eating dinner with your daughters and you, or your son or whatever, your, your, your videos of you and your girl or you and your man on the date. Everything is gonna look so cinematic and smooth. Matter of fact, let me pull up that video real quick. I'll pull it up on the, I'll pull it up on this, on this iPhone. Check this out now, just for context. Okay, I'm at a jewelry store event. We're promoting a jewelry store that's opening up. Well, actually it's opened up already, but you know, they're trying to branch out. So they had a little jewelry store event. All right, so this is a warning because we're gonna be acting a little bit ghetto, but check this out. Now look at the video. I turned the sound off because, like I said, it's very ghetto. But my brother's just shooting with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This looks like something you would see in a rap video. Look at the background closely. You see you got the bokeh effect. The zoom, the pans, everything is super smooth and cinematic. This is beautiful. All right, this is beautiful. And you can tell at the beginning of the video when the dude is holding them. Look at this. This is so sick. So cinematic mode and the 120 hertz refresh rate, that's an upgrade right there alone. Nice shoes, shoes. <laughs> that is enough to upgrade. Next, now let me answer the next question everybody wants to know for 2021. Okay, now we, we ask this question every year when a new iPhone comes out, Android versus iPhone, who wins? Who wins for the year? And as much as I'm feeling this iPhone 13 Pro Max, because I really am, Android wins again, all right? Android wins again because of one word and one word only, innovation. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, innovation, okay? That's why Android is still winning. We got phones that do stuff like this, bang. All right, hold up, <laughs> look at this. Let's do that one more time. Look at this. This is a foldable phone, okay? Foldable devices. That's why Android wins in my opinion. Now, iPhone wins when it comes to cinematic mode in the camera. But other than that, if you wanna go feature versus feature, Android still wins. All right, Android is winning again. Now, shout out to all my Apple fans. All right, the Apple, shout out to Apple Mafia. I need the Apple Mafia to stand down for a minute. All right, Samsung Knights, I know y'all getting ready to have a good laugh. Apple Mafia, I need y'all to stand down for a minute because I gotta talk about everything that I don't like. Now, I know this is the part of video that y'all don't like. Nobody likes to hear things about, you just spent 14, 15, 1600 bucks on a phone. You don't wanna hear somebody complaining about the things that they don't like. But like I always say, all right, this is not a fucking commercial. This is a review, all right? This is not a sales pitch. I'm not trying to get y'all to go out and buy an iPhone. This is a review. I'm somebody that bought an iPhone, so I'm gonna tell you everything that I like about it and everything that I don't like about it. And then you make your own decision. Now you're gonna see me pulling out Android phones throughout the course of this video. This is not a comparison video, but whenever I tell y'all I don't like something, I like to give y'all the reason why I like it on something else. I'm not just gonna say, oh, I don't like phones that don't have fingerprint sensors and then don't show you a phone that has a fingerprint sensor. I'm not gonna do it like that. I wanna have a phone on standby, which is probably gonna be an Android phone because <laughs> that's what it is to give y'all a valid reason of why I don't like certain things. Okay, so let's start off with everything that I don't like. Number one, the price. Okay, now, shout out to Apple for giving us more storage, but one terabyte for 1,600 bucks? <laughs> Let me clear my phone and say, <clears throat> 1,600 bucks for one terabyte, that price is too goddamn high, all right? That's TGH, too goddamn high, G-A-T. All right, to get damn high. I don't like that. Now, I always say you gotta pay to play. I understand that. And I also say, if you're gonna spend a thousand bucks, then this is one of the phones that you want. All right, if you're gonna drop a thousand, you're not gonna like it. I don't like it either, all right? But this is one of the phones that you want. If you're gonna spend a thousand, get one of these, okay? Do not spend a thousand bucks on an Asus ROG 5. As much as I love that phone, the camera can't compare. 
All right, this is only these are only two phones that are worth that big giant price tag, but I don't like it. All right, just because you know you go out to dinner, you order the lobster, the lobster scanty, you know what I'm saying, the shrimp scampi, you're not gonna like that price when you get the bill, but you're gonna like the food. This is the lobster, all right? This is the shrimp, the scrimp scampi, scrimp. All right, this is the scrimp scampi phone right here. All right, so the price, I don't like it, but I respect it, and I respect Apple for dropping one terabyte. You need that, especially with a phone like this with cinematic mode on the camera. You're gonna be shooting a lot of videos. Save up that extra couple of dollars. Get the one terabyte version. Next, speaking of price, all right? Now, you buy a one terabyte iPhone 13 Pro Max, you drop 1600 bucks plus tax, looking at almost 1700 bucks, no charger in the box. I don't like that. Now, Apple is the one who started this trend, all right? They made their bed, so they got a lie in it. Now, I don't support Samsung and Xiaomi jumping on the bandwagon. Now, look, I do live on the planet Earth, all right? So I'm all about the environment. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then, I will hug a tree. All right, when I'm walking down the block, I give a tree a little hug, a little dap. I respect that. But there's plenty of other ways to save the environment instead of shortchanging you after you drop 1600 bucks on a charger. I'll take the, give me the phone, wrap it up in a, wrap it up in a towel and sell it to me like that. Save all of the cardboard boxes, save the Apple troll stickers, save all of that bullshit. Give me the phone, the charger, some headphones, wrap it up in a towel and present it to me like that. I'll take that. I'll take the loss from the presentation as, a, as opposed to the accessories. I'm spending 1,600, 1,700 bucks. Give me my accessories, all right? I don't like not having the charge in the box. Next, speaking of things that's not in the box, no headphone jack, that shit's whack. Apple, y'all can have that. That ain't even what I'm mad at, all right? Hashtag bars, shout out to my man Ars. Look, no headphone jack, I'm not even gonna gripe about that anymore because like I said in a different video, that went the way of the Dodo. All right, if you don't know what the Dodo is, don't worry about it. All right, Cause the Dodo's not here anymore, neither the headphone jack. I understand that. I'm shooting mad bars today. I understand that. But if you're not gonna give me the headphone jack and you're gonna charge me 1600 bucks, put the dongle in the box, Apple. I'm talking directly to Tim Apple, all right? Tim Apple, <laughs> shout out to everybody who knows Tim Apple. Tim Apple. Put the dongle in the box because there's still plenty of people like me who drive classic cars with the aux cable. There's plenty of people who have these karaoke machines and have all of these instruments and DJ controllers that require the headphone jack connection from your iPhone to that device. I'm not asking for a headphone jack. All I'm asking for is put the dongle in the box. And while you're at it, put some headphones in the box. Why not? Yeah, I used to do it. Why not? I don't understand that. You could buy a phone right now from Red Magic or one of these other companies that have more features on paper than this phone, cost less less than half the price. They give you the battery, a, they give you the, the battery charger, the, the brick, they give you a case, headphone jack, dongle. They give you everything in the box, screen protector. All of that comes in the box. You mean to tell me you drop 1,600 bucks and you get nothing. I don't like that. I, I don't like that. Let's keep it moving. Next, here's something else I don't like. I gotta pull up, I gotta pull up a nice clean page. This right here, all right, the notch. All right, shout out to the George Jefferson hairline, all right, the Bernie Sanders edition. I don't like the notch. Now granted, it is a little bit smaller than last year's iPhone, but it's time to let the notch go, all right? Innovation, man. That key, that's the key word to this video, innovation. You got phones like Samsung and Xiaomi coming out with cameras underneath the display. It's time to get rid of this notch. Right, it just looks retarded. Nobody likes it. You know, at first when it came out, it was it was the, the laughing stock of the industry. But Apple made up for it by having one of the best face IDs, probably the best face unlock in the game. So you kind of got used to it and then it kind of became a staple of Apple. But... I don't like that. I, I do not like the way that notch looks. Let me see if I can pull up something that has a, a brighter background. Something like this. You, you, you know, you see how that looks? That notch just looks crazy. I'm not feeling that at all. All right, so Apple, Tim Apple, right, on your next product research video, and your, and your next video for R&D, R&D your way up out of that notch. All right, we tired of that shit. Let's keep it moving. Next, 
No fingerprint sensor. All right now, the thing that kills me about this is the other day I just reviewed the uh, iPhone, no, not the iPhone, the iPad mini. The iPad mini has a dope fingerprint sensor on the top of the device. That could have been placed right there on the side of the phone, bang, fingerprint sensor. Bang, just like how Samsung did it. You see right there on the side. Let me put my code in real quick. Okay, now watch this. Fingerprint sensor on the side, bang, just like that. This way, when you're wearing your coronavirus mask, all right, because coronavirus is still a thing. <laughs> Cor coronavirus, the Rona, the Rona is still here. All right, when you're on that flight, I don't care. Now, look, we're not going to get into a big debate whether you believe the Rona is real or not. The point is, when you're on that flight, you really do got to wear a mask. You got your iPhone in your hand. Every time you want to open your phone, you got to keep pulling your mask down or putting up or putting your, your pattern in your pin. Let me look away. Putting your pattern in your pin. I'm not, my, not, you can't even use a pattern. All right, your pin. You only can use a pin. Now, I'm so used to saying pattern your pin because on Android phones, you have a choice. Okay? Now, look, if you live in that scumbag life, you might not want to use the actual pin because you might have to open up the phone next to the person that you're being scummy with. You know what I'm saying? You, It's easier to go like this, some crazy wild pattern, than have to, somebody can easily stand over your shoulder and memorize your pattern, uh, memorize your your pin. But when you go like this, right, when, when you got to open your phone and this is the pattern, nobody's going to remember that. Nobody's going to remember that. Fingerprint sensor, all right, Apple, throw the, now look, you can have the on-screen fingerprint sensor like this. Bang, just like that. Throw it on the side, throw it on the back, put it somewhere, all right, put it somewhere, because in this day and age, mask ain't going away, all right, mask, mask is gonna be around for, the, my, my personal opinion, I think people are gonna be wearing masks for the next five, 10 years. I know I will, because ever since this whole Rona stuff started, I haven't been getting sick like I usually do because now when I travel, I'm always wearing a mask. So even after this is all this is under control, chances are I'll still travel with my mask on because I enjoy flying and getting back home and not being sick. And I enjoy that. <laughs> all right, so Apple, let's get a fingerprint sensor. Throw it on the side if you don't want to mess up the beautiful aesthetics of the front of the phone. <laughs> Big words alert, aesthetics. If you don't want to mess up the aesthetics of the front, throw it right here on the side. Bung. The same way, use the same implementation that you put on the uh, iPad mini, put it on an iPhone. Let's keep it moving. Next, now this is something that really grinds my gears. All right, no home screen rotation. I hate this. I hate, the, the reason I hate it, because I hate that you can do it on an iPad and you can't do it on an iPhone. And I also hate that you could do it on your Apple iPhone 8. Y'all remember the iPhone 8? You used to be able to rotate the home screen on the 8. You can't rotate it on the big boy. I don't like that. Now, when you get in your car, right, you got your phone like this, maybe you wanna put it on a dock that goes like this. All right, now, all of my des uh, desktop, all of my car charging docks, I like to have my phone like this. If you put your phone like this, you want Uber driver status. Nothing wrong with being an Uber driver, but if you're not an Uber driver, then why I look like an Uber driver? If I'm driving Uber, I'm getting the Uber money, okay, cool. Let me rock out like this. But sometimes you wanna be on some cool shit. You wanna have your phone like this, okay? You need landscape mode for your car chargers. No home screen rotation, I hate that. And when I'm in my when I'm in my car and I got the phone like this, it just looks weird. It just looks weird. It would look so much better if you could just rotate it. Now, Tim Apple, that's software, all right? That's not even, that's not even a big hardware gripe. That's a software issue that y'all can easily fix. Use the same, here comes that word again, implementation, the same way you implemented it on the iPad, put it on the phone, all right? Just that simple. Okay, no home screen rotation, I don't like that. Next, now here's something else I don't like. Power share, all right? Reverse wireless charging. Now, Apple finally got wireless charge a couple of years ago. I clearly remember having my usual Android versus iPhone wars. And I used to say, oh, Android phones, we got wireless charge. All of my Apple friends, they used to say, oh, wireless charge is whack. Who cares about wireless charge? Oh, it charges so slow. Who cares about that? Soon as Apple came out with wireless charge, it was like, yo, I'm getting a wireless charger in my car. Oh, you see all the new cars coming with the wireless charging pad. Wireless charge is the future. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. And as an Android user, we get it. 
but power share, all right? Power share means reverse wireless charging. So if both of us, all right, you as an Apple Mafia henchman and me as a Samsung Knight, we both sitting at the dinner table, both of our phones are getting ready to die. One of us can help the other one out, the other one can't. If you got an Android phone, you turn on reverse wireless charging, charge your friend's iPhone, okay? If you got an iPhone, you can't do that. I don't like that, all right? Apple, we need power share. Now I'm gonna say this as a, a this is a straight up fact. My AirPods and all of these little uh, Bluetooth earbuds that I be using, the ones that have wireless charge, especially my, one of my favorites, uh, the Clips, the T5 II A and C, I love those earbuds. I've never charged them yet using a wired cable, never. Every single time I charge those, I take it, this phone has it, the Galaxy, this phone has it on the fold. I take out my AirPods, AirPod Pros, I take out my Clips, I take out my B&Os, any earbuds that I got, when I sit down somewhere, I charge them up on the back of the phone. I've never plugged them in yet. Now, if we're trying to charge a big device, you're not gonna get a full charge, and you don't need it, all right? The perfect example is, shout out to my nephew. He's one of the members of the Apple Mafia. He thinks everything from, from Android is trash. But every time we go to dinner, the first question he comes out with is, yo, Ak, you got that, um, you got that Android phone that does that, that charge shit? I'm like, uh, you, I'm like, oh, you mean PowerShare? I said correctly. You mean PowerShare? Yeah, you got that phone with the PowerShare? Yes. Why? Would you like to charge your phone? Yeah, my phone is on 7%. Can you get me up to 25? Get me up to 30? Two ninety nine a minute. <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm charging two ninety nine a minute now. All right. PowerShare is not a gimmick. It's something that you can actually use in real life, and you need to drop it on the iPhones and stop playing the right. Next, all right, let me say it right. No power share, I don't like that. Next, 20 watt fast wireless charge. That ain't enough, all right? Zero to 50% in 30 minutes, that's pretty dope, but that ain't enough, all right? That ain't enough. Now look, I know what somebody's getting ready to say. Every time I talk about 120 watt fast charging, somebody's gonna say, oh, but it's not good for your battery. Oh, it kills the longevity of the battery. Look, man, that argument would have been valid a couple of years ago when people was keeping cell phones for three years. Nobody's keeping this iPhone 13 Pro Max for three years. No one. And on top of that, here's my Mi 10 Ultra. Now, I've been using this phone for over a year from day one. You see the battery percentage right now is on 100. I just took it off the charge a little while ago. Every time I come down here to shoot videos, I usually turn this phone on and put it on my Nest camera and use it as a security camera while I'm recording, okay? This battery has been going from zero to 100, then drained, recharged, zero to 100, drained, basically every day or every other day. Y'all see I shoot a lot of videos. For the last over a year and some change, no battery degradation at all. Same thing with one of the phones. Now this phone I actually use every day. This phone is in my pocket. All right, my Mi 11 Ultra, 120 watt fast charging. Now y'all seen the video I did for this one. We're talking about zero to 100% in 28 minutes. Y'all see the Mi 11T I did the other day? Zero to 100% in 23 minutes. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Battery degradation, that's only something that you gotta worry about if you're gonna be keeping this phone for five years. Now, if you're smart and you spent 1,600 bucks on a phone, you should have insurance on it. Why drop 1,600 bucks on a phone and not put insurance on it? My argument would be, let me get the battery degradation after a year and a half, two years, if, which I'm saying is a big if, if that did happen after two years and you just wanted to be that guy that has an iPhone 13 Pro Max two years from now, okay, fine, exchange it from Apple to get a new battery. But in the meantime, I'd rather have the quick charge. I'd rather charge my phone from zero to 100% in 30 minutes and worry about battery degradation later. Okay, and like I said, all of that battery degradation BS, I'm not buying it. Okay, I'm not buying it. I use these phones all day, every day. I fast charge them up all day, every day. I got 101 of these, 120 watt chargers laying around. Apple, all right? We want some faster charging. Now, I'm not saying you gotta jump out the window and go 120 watts. You don't gotta be like Xiaomi, but maybe, maybe 65 watt charging, zero to 100% in 45 minutes. I'll take that. I'll take that. 
but no really fast charging. This is quick charge. No fast charge. I don't like that. This is quick charge. I respect it, but it's not fast enough for me. Again, once you use a phone like this, then you're gonna be like, hold up, I ain't got 30 minutes for a full charge. I got 30 minutes, I need my shit, shit shower and shave status. I need a 30 minute phone. Now I had the same gripe with Samsung, so this is no, like I said, no fanboy shit. I had the same gripe with the Samsung phones. We need faster charging. That's why Xiaomi is killing the game right now. Let's keep it moving. Next, now this is something right here that I really don't like. No always on display. Okay, now you got wireless charge. I shoot, scoot, scoot. You got wireless charge, so you're gonna have your phone like this on a nice desktop wireless charger. Every time you get a notification, you can't see it. You're gonna have to wait for the phone to light up if you happen to be looking at it. But if not, this is how your phone is gonna look on the charger all day, as opposed to this. Which one would you rather have on your desktop? Let me turn this one off. <laughs> this phone is so fast, it don't even wanna turn off. I look at that. Which one would you rather have on your desktop charger? You wake up at three o'clock in the morning and you look over at your phone, what do you see? Nothing versus the time, the date, and my battery percentage and my notifications. Always on display. Now this is fully customizable. This is probably one of the best always on displays in the game. The Xiaomi ones, but Samsung is right up there too. Come on, Apple. All right, the biggest argument was, okay, well, they got LCD displays. People don't really put always on displays on LCD panels. Now you got AMOLED panels, what's your excuse now? Okay, we're talking about battery drain this, battery drain that. That's, that, that's all cap, all right? For a lot of y'all that keep saying, oh, well, I'm glad they don't have an always on display. That drains your battery faster, or you get screen burning. That's 100% bullshit, okay? Now, always on display, I got a notification right there for my Nest camera. Always on displays, they're not gonna just stay right there. If you notice, they move around, all right, that's to prevent screen burn. They're never gonna stay in the same spot. And if I wanna turn my always on display off without touching anything in the settings, all I have to do is turn my phone upside down. That'll automatically turn off always on display. All right, your phone is never gonna have always on display on while it's face down. And then when you pull it up, put it back on your desktop charger, your always on display will pop back up. All right, so Apple, it's time for always on displays. We got it on the Apple Watch. It's time to bring it onto the iPhone. All right, so no always on display. I don't like that. Next, multitasking. All right, this is the one now. This is the one that be causing a lot of controversy. Multitasking. And when I say multitasking, I mean split screen multitasking. So let's go to, let's go to, let's go to, let's go to Amazon. Matter of fact, let's do it like this. All right, so we'll go to Amazon from the iPhone, right? Now let's go to Amazon and let's go to uh facebook at the same time okay now say i'm on amazon and i want to go over to facebook i can swipe over like this bong back and forth now i'm on amazon shopping oh let me take it back to facebook okay and i'm on facebook take it back to amazon that is not multitasking okay let me show you what multitasking is i have you know we always got to do this let's go to amazon okay so we go over to amazon now we're gonna hit this button. We do a little split screen. And let's go to uh let's go to Facebook on the bottom. Matter of fact, let me open this up real quick. Okay, so we got Facebook, I right, shoes. <laughs> we got Facebook. Shoes shoes tell shoes tell just in, in, interrupted me. Hold on a second, y'all. Hold on a second. Yeah, hold on, hold on. All right, watch this, watch this, watch this. Okay, all right, this is multitasking. This is Facebook on the top, Amazon on, on the bottom. No splitting back and forth, two fully functional web pages at the same time. I right, shoot, thank you. Shoes just bounce. This is multitasking, okay? Not this. That's not multitasking, that's quick tasking. I, I will say it's quick, that's quick tasking, but that's not multitasking. Now, every time I say this, I get the same argument. Oh, who uses that? People don't even use that. People don't even use that. You only don't use it because you don't got it. All right, if you had it, you would use it. And I use it all the time. Plenty of times I'll be chilling on Facebook and I'll get one of these ads. Y'all seen the other day for the Fred Millie? Oh, like this right here. I get an ad for some Versace glasses or whatever. 
you know, one of these ads will pop up. I say, you know what, before I order it from Facebook, let me take it over to Amazon and see if they got it on Amazon for a little bit cheaper. You hit the split screen, and bang. Now I could be on Amazon, check those same glasses, or while I'm watching a video about the product, Look at these beautiful homes. I can search it right there. I am that is multitasking, okay? Apple, it's only been about 10 years, all right? It's time to bring out multitasking. Now give people an option. I know some of y'all gonna say, oh, I would never use that. Oh, oh, oh. Options, yeah. All right, give me the option. I know you may not, you may never use it. There's a lot of features on Android phones that I don't ever use, but I want the option. I right? I just dropped over sixteen hundred bucks on this iPhone. Give me the give me the option. Give me the choice. All right, maybe I want to use it. Maybe I'll never use it, but I guarantee you, people are gonna use it if they put it on an iPhone. I can guarantee you that. All right, so no multitasking. I don't like that. Next, here's another one I don't like on the camera. Let me pull up the camera real quick. No super zoom. Okay, now the maximum zoom on this is you got 15 times zoom. Okay, 15 times zoom. That's not bad. I, I'm not gonna say I don't. I, I hate it. That's not bad. But let's pull out this phone right here. All right, let's go to zoom. You got 15 times zoom, 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120 times zoom. Now look, this is zoomed so much you can't even see that iPhone. And I know, again, somebody's going to say, oh, who, who needs all of that zoom? If you go to my Instagram, look at that picture that I posted when I was in Vegas on the 55th floor. Matter of fact, I'll show it to y'all real quick. All right, check this out. Now I shot this picture with the Mi 11 Ultra, and this is why I call it scumbag zoom. Now I'm 55 floors up. If you pinch the zoom, you could barely see anybody down there. I activated the super zoom. Look at this. And that person is all the way down by the water. You can't even see them with the naked eye right now. Bong, just like that. Now, that's why I call it scumbag zoom, because you can use it to be scummy if you want. But you can also use it for good. <laughs> you can use it for good. The way I use it the most is when I park somewhere, if the no parking sign or the parking, uh, the, 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 the sign that shows the hours that you can park, if it's all the way down the block, I don't have to walk all the way to the corner. All I got to do is get out the car, use my scumbag zoom, and I could read that sign from a block and a half, two blocks away. All right, so for 1600 bucks, Apple, we want more zoom on the camera. All right, 15 times zoom, that's pretty good, but we need at least 50 to 60 minimum for this price range. Now, I wouldn't complain if no other phones had it, but you got it on the Galaxy, you got it on the Xiaomi phones, it's time to bring it to the iPhones. Next. All right, so no scumbag zoom. I don't like that. Now, here's something else I don't like with your videos. All right, say you're shooting a video. You can't pause the videos. I hate that. I hate not being able to pause the video. Now, here's a perfect example. You see, like, now I'm going to show you this video I just took the other day. I'm going to pull it up real quick. You see the video I made the other day when I was messing around with Amaya? This was all one incident, all right? This was supposed to be all one shot, but I had to post it as three different shots because you can't pause the video. Now watch this. I'm gonna pull out my Galaxy phone, go to videos. Now while I'm recording, bang, I can start recording, I can hit pause. Okay, let some more stuff go down. Then I can start recording again Okay, let's hit pause. Let a little, let a little more stuff go down. Now let me, you know, do some more, do some more silliness, b bust some more balls. Then I can just bang. Hit record one more time. All right, so that's three records. I hit pause. Let's hit stop. Let's go to the video. You see, all one video. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, now with your iPhones, no pausing on the video. I don't like that. Okay, you gotta, every time you, you're shooting a nice video and something happens, you wanna take a break for a second, you gotta stop the video. Like say I'm recording right now, I gotta stop the video and start it again. Why do that? I, I, I don't understand why Apple doesn't let you pause videos. I don't understand that. 
Okay, now, if I'm doing something wrong, y'all let me know. But, <laughs> but I have never seen a way to pause my iPhone video while I'm recording. That would be a nice feature. Next, now let me try to let me try to speed this up. Next, no notification LED. Now y'all see all of my flash notifications going off. I'm forced to use that because there's no notification LED. That would have been a nice feature. This way, say you want to do some scumbag shit, you could turn off all your notifications. You don't need the screen to keep popping up. But when you glance at your phone and it's on your desktop uh, wireless charger, you want to see a little notification LED to let you know you got missed calls, missed notifications, let, let you change the color of it. So maybe if it's flashing green, I know I got a missed call. If it's flashing orange, I got a missed text message. Notification LEDs. Okay, there's no notification LED on the iPhone. I don't like that. Next, now there's two more things that I don't like. I'm going to wrap this up. Next, color choices. Now, some, some people are going to say this is kind of petty, but color choices. Coming out with the same colors from last year, that was such a corny, lazy move from Apple. That was whack. Right now, I do love this new blue, but why not come out with all new colors? Maybe one signature color from last year. Keep the gold because everybody loves the gold. All right? So keep the gold. Come out with the blue. Come on. Y'all know we all want the red. All right? We all want the product red. Maybe another green, a different shade of the green from the 11. You know, maybe something for the ladies, a nice purple. You know, more color choices. Coming out with the same three colors from last year and adding one new color choice, that was whack. I right? because all of the people that didn't want to look like a peasant, you had to get the blue one. They they forced you to get the blue one. Right? Tim Apple, that was a gangster move. He forced you to get a blue iPhone. Just because you didn't want to look like last year's peasant with the gold. Now, even though if you get the gold 13, who's gonna know? I right? who's gonna know? You get the blue 13 Pro Max, everyone knows. All right, this is automatic non-peasant status. So more color choices, that would have been nice. Now, there's one more thing that I don't like. All right, now, this is the last thing that I don't like about the iPhone 13 Pro Max, innovation. All right, there's that word again, innovation. There's no real innovation. And one of the things that I, this is, a, I got a love-hate relationship with Apple. You know, they take a long time to come out with a feature, but when they do bring out that feature, they bring it out correctly. I respect that. All right? I got 100% respect for that. It took them a long time to come out with 120 hertz refresh rate. But when they came out with it, they did it right. Okay, no issues with that. But innovation. Apple is scared to take chances. All right? Apple is one of the companies out there that's scared to take chances. Now, let's talk about that for a minute. Look at the Samsung with the Notes, uh, with the uh, Galaxy Folds. Y'all remember when the first Fold came out? It was kind of a big joke because the outer display was mad small. Remember, you couldn't really touch this display without breaking it. Or they was, oh, you can't use your nails on it. It was, it was so fragile. It wasn't waterproof. It was $2,000. It was kind of the laughing stock. All right? This phone was kind of the laughing stock for a minute. But Samsung did it smart. All right? They did it smart. They said, look, here's a phone for y'all people that want innovation. But at the same time, we got the Galaxy Note and the Galaxy S. All right, we got the S line and the Note line for people that want a big boy, heavy hitting boss phone with no issues. With all of the features that you want, no issues, here they go. But if you're an innovator, all right, if you like to take chances, we got another phone that y'all might want to try out. We got a Galaxy Fold, a phone that folds in half like this. And we got a Galaxy's Flip, a phone that folds in half like the old camshell phones. They took a chance. I the first the first iteration of it was you know it was some people would call it a flop. I call it a go, but it just wasn't the best. Then they came out with the two and the three. Now for everybody that was laughing at the original Galaxy Folds, all of the Apple Mafia, you can't laugh now. Uh, you cannot laugh at the new Galaxy Z Flips. Look how big the outer display is. It's water resistant. You got an S Pen that you can actually use. So the inside display, no more fragility. All right, it's not fragile. And my suspicion, uh, my um, my hope is with the Galaxy Z Fold 4, if they can find a spot to drop the S Pen in and give us that Bluetooth S Pen, it's game over. All right, it's game over, bro. Y'all yeah, remember what movie that's from? It's game over. Same thing. When the original Flip came out, everybody was laughing at it because that out, including me, the outer display was trash. But now look at the outer display. Now you got your messages. 
You know what I'm saying? You can actually use it, and it's going to get bigger. It's going to get better. Innovation. But at the same time, if this is not your cup of tea, maybe this is not your cup of tea. You don't really want this foldable phones with, you know, less features here and there. You still got the Galaxy S21, the big boy out. Apple needs to start taking chances. Now, if Apple would have came out with an iPhone 13F, I call it the 13F, the fold, and maybe, yeah, it was foldable, but it's not water resistant. They got a few bugs here and there. Everything, all of the apps aren't optimized correctly for it. I still would have bought it. I would have bought an iPhone 13 to have as my heavy hidden main phone that everything works. And then let's try the foldable phone. I'm all about innovation. I'm all about trying new features. You only live once, all right? So all of this new technology coming out, we all want to get a chance to play with it, all right? Now, Apple might come out with a foldable phone three, four years down the line. You want to play with this foldable phone right now. And anybody that's used the Galaxy Flip or the Galaxy Fold, especially the Fold, all right, and you on Instagram and you chilling like this, and you're watching your little Instagram videos, and then you open it up, and you get that full screen Instagram. My man Tipsy Bartender in full screen. This is what you call innovation, all right? And every year Samsung takes a chance, comes out with a new phone, but they play it smart, they come out with a heavy hitter, and they come out with an innovative, uh, innovative, <laughs> an inno an innovation. They come out with an innovative phone. Apple needs to stop playing it safe and come out with some innovation, all right? Start, start taking chances. Bring out the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This phone is polished, everything works. But bring out another iPhone that folds. Bring out another iPhone that's giant. Do something different. Now, this is the most innovation of mini iPhone. This is not innovation, all right? The mini iPhone, the MagSafe, all right? MagSafe, I like the MagSafe option. You know, that's a nice little innovative feature that I wish Galaxy phones had, but that ain't enough. All right? that, we can't just let it stop there. All right, so Tim Apple, please. All right, Tim Apple, next year, when you come out with the iPhone 14, let's try another iPhone 14M, the 14 Max M. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The iPhone, uh, iPhone, give us a flip, give us a phone with a camera under the display, give us a phone with super fast battery charging, Give us a phone that does something. Give us a phone with a stylus. Give us something other than the same iPhone over and over with marginal upgrades. All right, we need more. Now, that's the last thing that I don't like. I know what some of y'all get ready to say, God damn, he really hate this phone? No. All right, shoes, tell him again. No. I love this phone, okay? Apple Mafia. Now this is the part of the video that you're gonna like. Let's talk about everything that I do like right after this quick commercial break. All right, y'all, so we back in. Now let's talk about everything that I do like, and I'm gonna try to make this quick. Number one, the build quality. Yeah, I know I gotta say it, feels so good in the hands, ladies, you know the procedures. I love it, all right? I love the build quality. Every year I do my end of the year phone awards. Last year, the 12 Pro Max was my favorite built phone of the year. And this year, it's going to be the 13 Pro Max. The way this phone feels, all right, the way it feels when you hold it with no case, that frosted back feel on the back, the way the sides just feel nice and thick, has that squarey, right, that squarey kind of feel. Look, 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 look at shoes, look at shoes. <laughs> has that squarey kind of feel to it, and it is water resistant, very durable. I love it. All right, the build quality on this phone, this is one of those phones that you're going to want to use a case. All right, when you're going out, but when you're in the house, you're going to want to take that case off. Now, I learned my lesson from last year's scratch gate. So this year, I'm using a tempered glass screen protector. Y'all seen the one I did from, um, I think that was Spigen. Yeah, the Spigen one that I got on here right now. This way, since I'm two phones Nelson, I can have my phones in my pocket like this. And now the glass won't scratch up. All right, so the build quality on this, I love it. Next. The look, all right, this phone just looks so sexy, all right, can, somebody said, can phones be sexy? Yes, right? yes they can, the same way cars can be sexy, phones can be sexy. I love the look of this phone, all right, the look and the feel, as much as I want innovation, like I said, I want innovation, but I want, I want double, I want double, I want to, I want this phone again. All right, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I want the 14 to have the same kind of build quality, but give me a 14S or 14M, 14Q, something else. 
to play with on the side. But leave this build quality the way. That's one thing I respect about Apple also. They didn't mess this up. I took the 11 with the, the, the more cylindrical shapes on the side. <laughs> The, the more cylindrical shaped phone. I didn't like that one. This has more of a, 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 squ a square look to it. I love it. All right, let me stop playing around. I love it. Next, Face ID, okay? Now, <laughs> Apple has the best, most secure, most in, in the most intuitive face unlock in the game. This one actually learns your face the more you use it. When you pull this one out with your sunglasses on, if you grow your beard, you grow your mustache, Whatever you're doing, all right, the face unlock on this one works flawlessly. I love it, okay? No issues with that. And I would go on record and say, this is definitely the, the best face unlock in the game. Now, when it comes to speed, yeah, it might not be the fastest because if you notice, you know, the, the Xiaomi phone is faster, but the problem with this phone, it's not that secure, all right? It's not as secure as the iPhone, all right? The iPhone has the best and most secure face ID, also known as face unlock, whatever whatever way you wanna call it. It's the best on the iPhone, all right? Now look, yeah, I know I, I like to roast Apple, but at the same time, I like to give credit where credit is due. And they did it big, all right? And they've always done it like that. They've always done it like that. All I just wish is they, it had a little fingerprint sensor to go in conjunction with the face ID. Let's keep it moving. Next, the display. Now, this is what I'm talking about. 120 hertz refresh rate. When you finally get this iPhone, you're going to be like, yo, what? If you're using a 12, when you get this, you're going to be like, something feels different. Now, it's hard. You, you can't see it on camera. Right? You're not, you can't really see it. It's something that you got to experience. But the 120 hertz refresh rate, <laughs> it's about time. All right? It's about time. Like I said, I, they, they, they like to take their time with stuff. But when they bring it out, they bring it out correctly. They bought this out perfectly, all right? The 120 hertz refresh rate just makes this phone feel super fast, super smooth, super responsive. It's just moist, <laughs> This is the moist iPhone 13M, the moist edition. Next, let's talk about the processor. Apple A15, bionic, supersonic, titanium, uranium, nitrate chip. What does all of that stuff mean? Who knows? Who knows? You don't need to know though. All you need to know is when you hit that search, go to apple.com. Bong, look how fast, that, you know what I'm saying? Look how fast that is. And the 120 hertz refresh rate is sick. All right, it's, 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 the, the process on this is ultra fast. Is it the fastest in the game? Is it faster than the Android phones? I would say the 13 Pro Max is up there. It's right up there. I, I, I would say, Apple has finally tied with Xiaomi and Samsung. Now look, I know some of y'all gonna think I'm a fanboy. I don't give a fuck what y'all think. I, I, I like to call it the way I see it, and I've always felt like Android phones were faster, but now that the 13 Pro Max has the 120 hertz refresh rate, so the phone actually caught up to the processing speed, it's right up there with the Mi 11 Ultra, with the big boy S21 5 Gangsta Alpha Omega Supreme. It's right up there, all right? It, it, it's, it, it's amazing. All right, so processing speed, you're gonna love it. I just wish it had multitasking, because you see, that was my, that was my from my usual testing, whenever I go to apple.com, my next reaction is do, do a split screen multitask at the same time. You can't do that. I just wish they could've do that. I wish they could've do that. <laughs> I wish they could do that. Next. Oh, the speakers. All right, let's talk about the speakers. This phone right now, I'm getting hyped. Let's talk about the speakers real quick. Let me pull up a test video. All right, so I got the official Flossy Carter sound test by my homeboy, Mark Rubier. Listen to these speakers. Yo, sound test, time for sound test. Everybody shut your mouth, time for sound test. Time to test that quality of sound test. How's it sound, Floss? How's it sound, Floss? How's it sound now? How's it sound now? Does it sound big? Does it sound loud? How's the bass, baby? How's the treble on? How's it sound now? How's it sound now? That's a sound test. That's a motherfucking sound test. Sound test. 
That's a sound test, baby. That's a sound test. That's a motherfucking sound test. How's the sound on that shit? God damn it, how Dual stereo speakers. So if you cover the bottom, look how loud the top still is. Look at that. How's the sound, white shoes? How's the sound on it? These speakers are amazing. You can feel the bass. That's a sound, baby. That's a sound, I love it. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Rabier. And on a side note, the concert that I went to in Vegas was crazy. If you ever get a chance to go to a Mark Rubier concert, make sure you take that chance. I right? trust me when I tell you it's gonna be it's gonna be one of the best concerts you ever seen. All right? This man is a movie. Let's keep it moving. All right, so now let's take a look at this beautiful display. My only issue with it is the notch. Other than that, it's glorious. Check this out. Basically bezel-less, except for the notch. But you got amazing viewing angles. 120 hertz. This is crazy. Look how beautiful this looks when you're watching your YouTube videos, watching your Netflix shows. No issues at all. Let's keep it moving. All right, so now let's do a little gaming. We got Asphalt 9 queued up. Now, y'all never seen me play Asphalt 9 on an iPhone? Here we go. Let's get money. Okay. Asphalt 9 on an iPhone. Okay, tap and hold, same procedures, okay. Okay. All right, we still got the spins. Oh, wait, oh, okay, okay, hold up. Oh, I missed it, I missed it. Oh, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, we up, we up. Let's go. Oh, I'm, I'm going crazy, I'm going crazy. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can do a spin out. Pow. <laughs> anyway, all right, let me, tell, let me turn this down for a minute. Asphalt 9 runs like a champ. No issues with gaming on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. All right, so now let's talk about the battery. The battery life on this is incredible you can easily get through a full eight hour workday with no issues at all. Now it doesn't have the fastest recharge in the world, but it's definitely not the slowest. You can charge your phone from zero to 100% in a little over an hour, which is not bad, not great, but not bad. But during the course of the day, the battery life on this phone is terrific. I, I have no issues with the batteries, nothing negative to say at all. Now let's talk about my favorite feature of this phone, the camera. If you buy the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you officially have bought the best video camera on any cell phone out right now. And you're gonna have the most fun with it. So let's go through the different shooting modes. You got your time lapse. You got slow motion, which you can do in wide angle, all the way up to nine times zoom. Cinematic. Cinematic is the best video mode that I've ever used, and it's the most fun. Look how you get that zoom and then the background blurs out by itself. This is so dope. Trust me, I right? get it and play with it for yourself. Make some videos of you and your friends. Every video that you make, it's gonna look like a rap video or a movie. It's just gonna look crazy. I, I love cinematic mode. Then you got regular videos. I right? so you got wide angle all the way up to nine times zoom. 4K, 60 frames per second. You got your regular photos. You got wide angle, all the way up to 15 times zoom. And check this out. Now you got the macro camera, 
Now watch this. Now here's my iPhone 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max. You remember when you got a little SIM card or something and you can't see it and you try to zoom in like that? Look what happens. You see how it's all blurry? You have to go to wide angle and stretch it. Now with the macro, look at this. Bang, there's the numbers. All right, so you got the macro camera. I love that. You got one of the best portrait mode cameras in the game. All, right, all your portrait shots gonna look beautiful with perfect bokeh effects. And you got panorama. Now let's take a look at some test pictures and videos.
Now let's talk about MagSafe and accessories. Between the cinematic camera and MagSafe, those are two things that I wish Android would copy off the iPhone. I love the MagSafe capabilities. Now this is one of my favorite products, the MagSafe battery extender. Magnetizes right to the back of your phone and activates the charge. Now you got cases that have MagSafe compatibility so the products still work. Bang. I love that little sound too, that boom. <laughs> I love that. Let's get it, let's see if I can do it again. Hold on, watch this. I right, just did it again. There's a little delay on that one. Let's try that one more time. All right, here it goes. I love that. And you also have a bunch of MagSafe products and a bunch of MagSafe accessories. So one of the things that I like about buying iPhones is you're never gonna have a shortage of accessories. All of the major case companies are gonna have a thousand and one cases. Now you buy the Xiaomi, the Mi 11 Ultra, you're not gonna find any Spigen cases, any UAG cases, any VRS cases. With the iPhone, you got no shortage of accessories, and I like that. Now this is my favorite case. I like the, mag the case that has a little MagSafe logo on it. And this is one of my favorite MagSafe products. Now I explained this in a different video. This is not a portable battery charger, it's just a battery extender, okay? It's not meant to charge your phone from zero to 100, but if your phone is at 7% and you and your friend both got an iPhone, nobody has power share, you pull this out, slap it on your phone, you can charge your phone from seven to maybe 40, 50% by the end of the night. That's extending the battery, not charging it up, extending it. All right, so if you buy this, you go into it thinking as thinking of it as a battery extender and not a portable battery charger. Then this accessory will pay for itself. Last but not least, let's talk about the floss factor. Now, if you're new to my channel and you don't know what the floss factor is, that means you go somewhere, somebody got a Mi 10 Ultra, somebody got a Mi 11 Ultra, somebody got the Z Flip 3, somebody got a Z Fold 3, Okay, hold on, we got, another, we got another heavy hitter right here that I just found in my little collection. Somebody got the Sony phones. All of these phones on the table, okay? You pull out your iPhone 13 Pro Max, where are you on the food chain? Are you on the top of the food chain like an Apex Predator, or are you on the bottom of the food chain looking like a gazelle? Well, here it is. iPhone 13 Pro Max, this is the top of the food chain. Okay, now, it's not the apex top of the food chain. That title still goes to the Galaxy Z Fold 3. This is a dinosaur, all right? This is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. But this is kind of like a Brontosaurus, all right? The, you know, the, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the biggest dinosaur out. But ain't really nobody messing with a Brontosaurus. They, 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 they big, but they not as mean. They just big, and ain't nobody messing with them, all right? This is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me find out. I watch, I watch one dinosaur show. You know what I'm saying? You let a nigga watch one dinosaur show. Now, all of a sudden, yeah, you're talking about dinosaurs. You know what I'm saying? This is like a pterodactyl right here. But all jokes aside, this is the top of the food chain right here. Now, if you're in the trendy community, this is it. All right, this is where you want, this is the phone that you want, this is where you want to be. All of the celebrities, all of the rappers, all of the actors, all, you know, all, all of the famous people you see on TV, all of the politicians, anybody who's anybody has an iPhone 13 Pro Max. You could be anybody too. All right, you, got, you buy one of these, you go to Starbucks and sit with anybody right in the screenplay. You can sit right next to them with your turtleneck on and y'all could both share a cappuccino together. All right, you get a strawberry frappuccino, both of y'all with your silk socks on, y'all gonna look dope. Now in the nerd community, all right, in the nerd community, we know that this is the top of the food chain. This is a foldable phone that has an S Pen, all right, with, with, with more zoom, reverse wireless charging, multitasking, always on display. We in the nerd community know that this is the real top of the food chain, but in the general community, all right, the general population, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you right up there. You right at the top of the food chain. Do not buy this phone and be worried about somebody shutting you down with a phone war. Now you get into the phone wars, you're going to lose the innovation argument. You're going to lose that. But when you hit them with the cinematic mode on the camera, it's game over. Okay? Mm -hmm. So overall, 
on a scale of one to 10, I'm giving the iPhone 13 Pro Max a major, major, major go. Now, I would have loved to have given this a quad major, but it's just missing a couple of things, like the always on display and the fingerprint sensor, basic things that I need on my phone. Those are, for me, fingerprint sensor and always on display, that's basic, that's the basics. But the cinematic camera, the refresh rate, the battery life, the build quality, the speakers, everything about this phone screams premium, all right? I love this phone. Shout out to Apple. Y'all did it correctly on this one, but there's always room for improvement. Now, I know I talk a lot of shit about Apple, but the reason I talk that talk is because I want Tim Apple to watch this video and say, you know what? We're tired of floor shitting on us for not having an always on display. Let's put always on display on the phone, all right? We're tired of all of these phone reviewers complaining that there's no fingerprint sensor in the middle of a pandemic. Let's put a fingerprint sensor on the side and shut them up. That's why we got to keep saying this stuff, because we want Tim Apple and company to shut us up and shut us up with features that we want. We paying y'all all this money so I could drive around in all these Teslas. Give us what we want. All right. But all jokes aside, I love this phone. I highly recommend it. Anyway, iPhone 13 Pro Max. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this one. And one more thing. Now, I didn't really talk about the mini and the uh as far as the regular Pro, the Pro is exactly the same, just smaller. The 13 and the Mini, these are just watered down versions. All right? There's no reason for me to make a full video about it. The, uh, the operating system, everything works the same, except for you're getting less cameras, less battery. It's just less. All right? just, uh, just, imagine, just imagine the Happy Meal versus, <laughs> versus the Big Meal. All right? This is the Happy Meal. This is the number seven super size. That's all I got to say. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this one. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Boxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time. 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know. Stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. Don't beat boys and laugh. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat, Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I see y'all in the comment section early. Hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing. I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes and pitch me rope. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Spock won the beam up. Everybody to subscribe to Flossy Carter for the real tech reviews. Now, Flossy Carter, we know you Flossy. Now, guess what? I'm flashy. Money made all day, the one and only. Flossy Carter, you part of the money team.